A very good morning to you, my dear sisters and brothers, and welcome to Carmelite, the reflections on the readings of the day. Let us begin our reflection invoking the name of the Trinity, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, today is the 3rd of April. It's the Sunday, and we are celebrating the 5th Sunday of Lent. And for our gospel reading, we have a very interesting passage taken from the gospel according to St. John, chapter 8, verses 1 to 11. Woman caught in adultery. Let us now meditatively and reflectively listen to the gospel passage. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 8. Verses 1 to 11. At that time, Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery. And placing her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? This they said to test him, that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And once more he bent down and wrote on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the older ones, and Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus stood up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go and from now on, sin no more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, I came across an interesting fact about the world's largest land animal the elephant. It is said that they are frightened to drink from settled waters. So, when they come to the settled waters, they first unsettle it and then start drinking. Interesting. But then what could be the reason? The matter of the fact is, when an elephant peeps into settled waters, it immediately sees another elephant in the water facing it, as if ready to attack. So, to do away with this fear, it first unsettles the water and then starts to drink. Well, world's largest and strongest land animal, but still frightened of another of its own kind. In other words, Elephants are frightened to look into the mirror. In the Gospel episode today, Jesus is inviting all the men of the law and the Pharisees to look into the mirror because they too, like these elephants, are frightened to do so. Dear sisters and brothers, we have a very serious sin placed before us, a sin so grave that the punishment calls for death by stoning. 
we have the men of law the accused woman and we have jesus also what turn will this episode take we are going through a period during this season of lent called the scrutinies what actually is a scrutiny taking a deeper look at the definition we see that it is diving deep and searching out the good in something now quite often this word is understood in a negative sense but mind you not here in our case for us it is searching out the true the good and the beautiful in us and also in others and prizing this goodness as the gift of god to our community and family for all of us who will renew our baptismal vows on easter vigil it is the searching out of how well we are following the will of our heavenly father and how well we are imitating jesus christ what goods do we have that can be brought out instead of focusing on the negatives is there something positive that with a little scrutiny can be brought out of us more fully well jesus bends down and writes on the ground we do not know what he was writing maybe he was scrutinizing the good in the woman bought before her for condemnation let those without sin cast the first stone the truth is we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god and actually we aren't the ones who can condemn nor should we upon deeper reflection we can see our own need for god's mercy and forgiveness at the same time we should also see that we are god's children who are loved beyond all measure we must learn to see ourselves as god sees us and we should also pray that we also might hear the lord's words neither do i condemn you go and sin no more if we allow ourselves to enter into who we are who we are created to be children of god and children of the light we begin to see the good and upright in us which allows us to become more like christ full of love full of compassion however it really looked like the end of the road for the woman caught in the act of a capital crime her fate lay in the hands of an angry mob desiring to kill two birds with one stone the throng decided to use her as a political pawn and so dragged her to jesus but they badly miscalculated jesus replied to their tough question with a tougher question they planned to embarrass him but in the bargain he ems- he embarrassed them reduced to silence they were forced to admit the hypocrisy of their self righteousness they walked away and left her standing there before the only one who was truly righteous but mind you righteousness did not condemn he forgave now that's different it really hadn't been seen ever before at least not like this dear friends jesus offers this anonymous adulteress a brand new start she could have been mary magdalene as in mel gibson's film or she could have been anyone we are all guilty of adultery at least in the sense that the book of hosea uses the word god is the spouse who has given us everything and deserves our exclusive loyalty we should worship the ground he walks on but instead we have cheated on him looking for thrills from other lovers who have not delivered what they promised given that god is the source of life itself rejecting him means choosing death well it seems so easy for jesus to say to the adulteress and to all of us neither do i condemn you with those words he saved her from death and gave her a new lease of life 
So, what did it cost her? Go and sin no more is her program. She must change her life. But what did it cost Jesus? Practically everything. He was required not just to change his life, but even to lose it. Yes, sisters and brothers, a famous German theologian, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, pointed out the difference between cheap grace and costly grace. Now, grace is free. It is the absolutely unmerited gift of pardon and loving friendship extended to us by God in a way that transforms us and makes all things new. But such grace is not cheap. It was paid for by the sufferings of God's Son, suffering that He willingly embraced out of love for us. Saul needed this grace desperately. He occupied a conspicuous place among the self-righteous, a member of the bloodthirsty crowd that stoned Stephen. When on the road to Damascus, he realized who he was and what he deserved. He saw the grace offered to him as more precious than gold. It was the pearl of great price. In light of this treasure, all else appeared to him as trash. He was not satisfied to be a passive spectator. Rather, he wanted to share personally in Christ's suffering and so come to experience the exhilarating power of his resurrection. The love that is stronger than death. Brothers and sisters, that grace is available to each one of us. The question is, how precious do we view it? What value do we place on it? It is offered to us daily through the Eucharist, the Word of God and prayer. Are we too busy to fit these into our schedule? How much effort do we make to grasp the price? Well, Jesus initially did not respond to their question but remained silent and by doing so, he invited everyone to self-reflection. On the one hand, he invites the woman to acknowledge the wrong committed. On the other hand, he invites her accusers not to shrink from an examination of their own conscience. Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. Such an authoritative reply reminds us that it is only the Lord who can judge. It reveals the true meaning of divine mercy, which leaves open the possibility for repentance and emphasizes the great respect for the dignity of the person, which not even sin can take away. Jesus does not enter into a theoretical discussion with his interlocutors on this section of Mosaic law. He is not concerned with winning an academic dispute but about an interpretation of Mosaic law, but his goal is to save a soul and reveal that salvation is only found in God's love. Dear friends, the Gospel passage clearly teaches that Christian forgiveness is not synonymous with mere tolerance, but implies something more demanding. It does not mean overlooking evil or even worse, denying it. God does not forgive evil, but definitely the individual and it teaches us to distinguish the evil act, which as such must be condemned from the person who has committed it, to whom he offers the possibility of changing. While man tends to identify the sinner with his sin, closing every escape, the Heavenly Father, on the contrary, has a very different approach. Instead, he sent his Son into the world to offer everyone a way to salvation. The woman's situation is certainly serious, but a powerful message flows precisely from this situation. In whatever condition we find ourselves, we can always open ourselves to conversion and receive forgiveness for our sins. Neither do I condemn you. Go and do not sin again are really words that are consoling and soothing. 
Jesus did not condemn the woman, but neither did he overlook her sin. He told her to go and leave her old life of sin. In other words, he called her to a new and transformed life. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is calling each one of us to look into the mirror of our lives and identify those areas which need healing and change. When we dare to look into this mirror and bring before Jesus all that is taking us away from responding to God's love, Jesus, by his grace, will heal us and teach us how to live a transformed life. Actions speak louder than words. Let's examine where we spend our time, money and energy. And that will tell us what it is that we really value most. Let us conclude our, pray, our reflection with a short prayer. Lord, give me the courage to look into the mirror of my life, humbly acknowledge my weaknesses and courageously walk the path that leads to transformation. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the psalm echoes the need to give praise to God for all the mighty deeds that have been done and continue to be done by the divine hand of God. Although there are rough times, God will give the faithful reasons to rejoice just as harvester rejoice in the rich produce of the land, especially when the produce has been the result of other people's hard work. Let's pray that psalm now. What great deeds the Lord worked for us, indeed we were glad. What great deeds the Lord worked for us, indeed we were glad. When the Lord brought back the exiles of Zion, we thought we were dreaming. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, on our tongues songs of joy. What great deeds the Lord worked for us, indeed we were glad. Then the nations themselves said, What great deeds the Lord worked for them. What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. Bring back our exiles, O Lord, as streams in the south. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. They go out, they go out full of tears, bearing seed for the sowing. They come back, they come back with a song, bearing their sheaves. What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Pray for God's blessing now. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brother and sister, we remember today all those who are celebrating their birthdays, especially Brother Santosh Menezes, Kamalite, Kevin Leon Krasta from Koramangala, Bengaluru, Cecilia D'Souza from Mangaluru, Celestine D'Souza from Kerpuram, Bengaluru, Jane D'Souza from Borivili, Mumbai, Cheryl Fernandez from Binder, Mumbai, Edwin Stephen Machado from Mira Road, Mumbai, Francis Pinto from Binder, Mumbai, Asis Tauro from Gurupur Kaikamba, Janisha Fernandez from Bengaluru. Wish you all a happy birthday. God bless you. And we pray for the departed soul of Josephine Rosemary Elizabeth and John Stevens from Mira Road, Mumbai, John Pinto from Bendur, Mangalore, and Peter Tauro from Mira Road, Mumbai. May the Lord grant them eternal rest.
that's all for today my dear friends have a great sunday we thank reverend father ratan almeida sharing his audio with us thank you god bless you